Hello friends, and welcome to Turtle Queen Gaming, and back to If My Heart Had Wings. Apparently, Kanako is so hungry. Whatever. <laughs> She's always hungry. They're still not back yet? They must be working hard. Is there anything left in the fridge? Oh, hey, Hat. What's up, Senior Hat? What's wrong? Are you hungry, too? It's not food you're after? So you want to wash? I see, I see. Thanks for taking care of Hat for us. Ooh. It's quite cold today, isn't it? I'll be okay to wear more than just my underwear. Okay, okay. You want to wash? Let's go. Looks like it feels nice. I'll have a shower later, too. Hey, senior hat. What's that? Look! At the sky! <gasps> Gasp! Doesn't it seem faintly purple? The direction is... East! Which means... The Easter sky was a bluish purple. We were tidying up after finishing flight training for the day, but we stopped working to gaze at the Easter sky. This is a sign, isn't it? This was the moment we'd be been waiting for, but we were careful not to get our hopes up yet. We don't know. I just realized what time it is, sorry. Uh, we don't know, but until now, it hasn't been that color. Well, I don't know, at least not since we started paying attention to it. The air temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. That's three degrees lower than yesterday. The overall temperature is quite high, and there's a breeze. This could be it. We all look towards Amani. Amani looks at the eastern sky. She was just standing there quietly. While looking at the signs that indicate the phenomenon could occur, she seemed to be assessing the situation. Or maybe she was praying. Amani! Yeah? It, it might occur tomorrow morning. There are two days left on summer holidays. This was the time limit for Amani's activities with the Soaring Club. Senpai? Amane? I, I know. Yeah, I'm okay. I gave Katori a prod and spoke quietly to her. The second in charge should take care of occasions like this. Yes, you're right! Mm. Listen up, everyone! The morning glory will definitely be occurring tomorrow morning. That is what we believe. That is why today, regardless of whose turn it is, we will all wake up before dawn and prepare for flight. All right. I hope it means as much to Amani as she wants it to. It's 4 a.m. Don't make so much noise. Kanako is still sleeping. Roger that. Roger! Uh, Katori? Sorry. <laughs> She's so excited. We got up at the usual time for people whose turn it is to watch the dawn sky and carried our things outside the dormitory. There is still one hour before morning glory, or the morning sun arises. We have to complete our launch preparations before then. It's quite cold, isn't it? It's a little chilly to be wearing such light clothes. Money, will you be alright in those clothes? Yeah, I'll be fine. Look lively, Amani! You'll soon be flying above the clouds! Katori, you're speaking really loudly. Ageha, how's the sky? I don't really know. The sky was covered in darkness, and it wasn't possible to see with the naked eye whether or not there were any clouds. Anyway, let's hurry. If we hang about for too long, we won't make it in time for dawn. We reach the runway and immediately begin to work on the assembly. Right, Elrond. Okay. Okay. Left, Elrond. No problems. Next is the elevator. While this is going on, I eat a rice bowl I had made the night before. I have to do something about my empty stomach. Amani? What have you been doing since just now? Sorry, it's nothing really. We'll be fine. I'm sure you... it will go well. Here, have a rice ball and liven up a bit. Yeah, thanks. Owie, how's it looking? I don't know. In the training, I finally figured out how to catch the thermals. The highest we've flown in training has been 600 meters. We won't be able to reach the morning glory at altitudes like that. Suddenly, a strong wind blows. 
Owie, apply dive brakes. Got it. When the glider is on the ground, lift will be created if the wind hits the main wings. The wind, with winds as strong, if we were careless, the aircraft might start floating upwards. That's why we made use of the equipment used to reduce lift during landing. If the lift is at a low level, it'll be okay even if the wind hits. It's suddenly become very windy, hasn't it? This could be because of the morning glory. It's said in the book that when this occurred in Burketown, Australia, raging winds were blowing beneath the clouds. We'll need to use a crosswind launch. Of course, when the strong wind blows from the side, the glider will be blown with them, so we need to use a special technique for takeoff. We haven't practiced it much, but we should be okay. Look! Dawn is breaking! The eastern sky became dimly lit. Also, the conditions of the sky became clear. Look at the clouds over there! Oh, there it is! Bum, bum, bum. Dawn hadn't broken yet, and the sky was still gloomy, but we could see the outline of clouds. These clouds could be called morning glory, and were fine and delicate, and looked like they could disappear any minute. Katori, prepare for launch! Roger! Everyone quickly got into position. Amani and I got into our seats in the cockpit. The crosswinds are really strong, Aoi. Okay, I'll use full rudder from the start. I push down on the rudder pedal, even though we're not moving yet. If we're hit with the crosswind during takeoff, the glider's nose will face into the wind. This is called the weather vane effect. By turning the rudder in the opposite direction, we can reduce the weather vane effect. However, because the rudder has almost no effect until we pick up the speed, we need to push the rudder pedal before launch and gradually release it to, as we accelerate. This is the first time we've taken off in such strong winds. This kind of feels like a rehearsal, but we have to do it. The runway is clear! Or Ageha came to let us know that there were no obstructions on the runway. Then, moving around to the side of the glider, she lifts up the left wing, a little higher than usual. The wind is blowing from the front right direction. If the wings are horizontal during takeoff, the wind from the side will go under the right wing, messing up the balance. That's why we need to launch with the right wing a little lower, to stop the crosswind from going under it. To maintain the bank angle at which Ageha is tilting it, I move the yoke a little to the right to operate the right aileron. Launch preparation is complete. Here we go, Amane. Uh. Yeah. Amane replied nervously. I give the thumbs up to signal Ageha outside. Launch preparations complete. Lift it up, Katori. Ooh, here we go. The moment Ageha gave to the or the signal, the winch started moving as if it couldn't wait. The glider steadily accelerates. I pull back on the yoke. It's all up to you, Owie. Leaving behind Ageha, who is holding up the wing and running with us, the glider floated into the air. Ugh. The glider wobbled like crazy when the crosswind hits it. Are you okay? Owie? Amari? We're okay. We've leveled out. Somehow we're alright. Roger! As we accelerate, the ailerons start working and we are able to maintain the bank according to the crosswind. Tilting the rudder in the direction of the incoming wind, the glider steadily rises into the sky. Uh, our airspeed is really fast. We're climbing much more quickly than usual. Even if it looks like we're flying at the same speed, if the headwind is strong, the speed of the wind hitting the glider, in other words, the airspeed is different. When the airspeed is high, the lift increases and it causes the aircraft to rise. Today, the wind is strong. The power of the winch pulling us flights against the power of the main wings lifting us up, causing the glider to shake. Releasing! Just before passing over Katori's head, who is operating the winch, I release the tow rope. Whoosh! Freed from the force that was holding us down, the glider suddenly is thrown into the air. I immediately turn around and check that the tow rope has been released. Release confirmed. The launch is a success. Okay! 
I checked the altitude on the alt altimeter. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are currently 300 meters above the ground. When I looked up at the sky above, outside the dome-shaped canopy, all I could see was sky. The sky changing from night to morning. Indigo orange and pale yellow. Uh, the morning sun paints a complex radiant as far as the eye can see. And there, in the middle of the straight, or in the middle, a straight line of clouds stretched out. Amazing. I felt like I was being sucked into it as I started this stared at this spectacle. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What are those clouds? Wow, you're right. What are they? They're I still haven't figured out these girls' voices, honestly. They're very unusual, aren't they? They look like someone just has just painted them. If that were the case, they're not painted very well. Girl B has a fucking tood. That's not true. I think they're really pretty. It's a good painting. <sighs> As always, you'll praise anything, won't you? Hey, sis, what's that? Huh? Something is flying up there. Could it be? The glider that we saw before. What are they doing so early in the morning, I wonder? They're flying, aren't they? I can see that. That's not what I mean. Well, they're trying to go over there, aren't they? Over there? See? To those clouds! See, and that's the thing, is like, everything's so condensed down that those girls seem to have no point, but they're making a big deal out of them. They haven't even named them yet. That's why the timeline doesn't make sense to me. Eh. It's so pretty! Yeah. It's so mysterious. How could something like this occur? It's really like a miracle! But isn't it a bit different to that photo? Yeah. Isn't it going to get even bigger? I don't know. Where are Aoi and Amane? Wait a sec. I'll look through the binoculars. Um... Ah! There they are! Where? Where? See? Above the lake! It just shone! Oh, uh, whoa! Clutching the yoke, I somehow managed to maintain our position. The airflow is getting really rough. It's taking everything I've got to keep our position. On days where the airflow is stable, I only need to look or need to hold on to the yoke slightly. However, in these rough skies, the glider is shaking all the time, and we don't know when it will be when we will be hit with sudden winds. I need all my concentration as the glider takes the wind. Are you okay, Aoi? I I'm fine. More importantly, can you search for the therm some thermals, Amani? Understood. Amani looked outside the canopy to search for places where thermals may occur. Clouds are the markers for finding thermals. Clouds are formed when the warmed up air drafts are cooled in the sky. Therefore, thermals are usually below them. As I watch the variometer, I fly based on guesswork. The barometer is one of the instruments in the glider and tells us whether it is rising or descending based on atmospheric pressure. If there is a sudden change in the barometer, it's possible that we've entered a thermal without realizing. There's no reaction, huh? The reaction of the barometer was slow and the glider was gradually descending. There! It's a cloud! And Lonnie called from the front seat. Where? Um, four o'clock! Roger. I pulled the yoke to the right and pushed the rudder pedals, and got the glider turns. Mm, the rudder feels heavy. When the ailerons or the rudder take on strong winds, they become heavier, but that means that their effect is stronger. Is that it? In my field of vision, I can see a small cloud Amani had found. It was small, fine, elongated cloud. Please let this work. I feel like I'm praying as I fly under the cloud. We continue for a while as we don't seem to be hitting any thermals. After all, we can't see them, so we don't really know if they're there or not. Where is it? I go to turn so that we can head towards another area, then... Oh, God. Whoa. Suddenly, the left wing lifts up, tilting the aircraft. Owie, this is... Yes, I know. This wasn't the feeling of being shaken by a crosswind. A rising thermal grazes the wings. 
I quickly turned the rudder to the left. The barometer reacts. The glider was rising. We've entered a thermal. As we confirmed that, I continued to turn the glider. Thermals extend upward through the atmosphere like a pillar. In most cases, the strongest lift is in the center, known as the core. Normally, it gradually gets weaker the further you go towards the outside. That's why, if you want to climb higher, you have to get as close to the thermal of, or core of the thermal as possible. I turn the glider to search for the core. The barometer tells us that we are rising. We are getting closer and closer to the core. Looks like we've entered the core, said Amani as she looked at the instruments. I try to keep the glider circling in the, in the same area in an attempt to rise in the core of the thermal. Alright, we're climbing. Turn, turning the seat, I felt the glider was rising. It's jokingly called the ass meter, but you can feel all sorts of g-force through the seat. And is one of the sensations that are important for piloting a glider. I see what you did, yeah. That's because the thing that informs you of the glider's reactions the quickest is not the instrument, it's the seat that is in direct contact with your body. While getting the positive response and not wanting to lose it, I had paid close attention while operating the controls. They're rising! Looks like they're going to be able to ride a thermal. Aoi! Aoi! Aoi's... Aoi's busy right now. Amane, it looks like it's going well! Yeah, right now, we're rising on a thermal and our altitude has reached 500 meters. We have to double that. Yes, come on! It seems like the airflow is getting rough, but how about the sky above you? It's pretty rough, but we'll be alright. Aoi's doing his best. It seems like it's going to all- or it's all going according to plan. Keep going! Above the clouds! We really mean- or want to do that, but... Huh? What's wrong? If we rise a little higher, we'll leave this thermal. Uh, why? The lift is weak, and our rate of climb is slow. At this rate, we won't make it. No! We need to make it! We won't be able to rise any higher here. The G-force that felt a strong, or so strong at first is now getting weaker. We'd risen to a certain extent, but uh, we were just now maintaining the current altitude. If we stay here like this, the thermal might grow and we might be able to gain stronger lift. Well, if we think about the time, it's quite likely that will happen. This is because thermals get bigger as the sunlight hits the earth, which heats quicker in the, er, than the air. And with the level of heat, the air close to the ground warms up, causing thermals to occur. Yeah, but as it gets warmer, morning glory will disappear. Since last night was so cool, when the morning sun hits the earth, more and more strong thermals will start rising. But we don't have time for that. If we wait a little longer for the sun to come up completely, the morning glory will disappear. We're getting out of this thermal. Understood. As we look up to, mor or to the morning glory in the distance, we flew out of the thermal. We've traveled pretty far, haven't we? Thermals are often thought to extend straight up like a pillar through the air, but actually they don't go straight up. In the same way that smoke is blown by the wind, thermals twist in when hit by the wind from the side. While we're climbing in the thermal that was leading to one side because of the wind, we've moved further away from morning glory. The morning glory doesn't just stay in one place. It's rotating as it rolls, moving across the lake. If it gets too far away, then we will have to, no means of catching up with it to the other, or other than falling to increase our propulsion, which makes things difficult. Increasing speed. I push the oak forward, paint, pointing the nose downward. While sliding on the air, the glider accelerates. Uh, whenever the nose is pointed downward to the ground, or the ground always comes into view. Amani is scared of heights, stifles, or scream. Amani will, will be okay. The glider will not fall. I'll make sure of that. Yeah. It's falling. No way! It can't be! See? It's flying! But uh, the altitude is decreasing again, so they left the thermal. In this situation, that might have been a wise decision. Thermal? Well, you... aren't you just... No, no, no. Hey, what's a thermal? It's nothing. Ah, she likes it more than she likes to let on. But they are still descending. They have to find the next thermal quickly. <laughs> I love how they're so invested in us and we don't even know them. We've caught up with it, but we've lost a lot of altitude. 
To get back the altitude we've lost, we'll search for the next thermal. In theory, they occur more easily above ground that looks like soil, or a wide area of asphalt like parking lots. How about over there? Money pointed towards the runway which we've taken off. It is a wide area of soil in the sunlight and whoop, and certainly met the conditions for thermals to be made easily. All right. Huh? They're coming back? Are they planning on landing? Could it be there's a problem? Owie, owie, what's wrong? Did something happen? Don't panic, we're just searching for thermals. So you don't have a problem? That's right, except for finding thermals. That's a problem right now. But at this time, it must be hard to find thermals. It's good if you have the perfect places or clouds that look like thermals will form near them. Are there any other signs? Hmm. The only thing... Other... Or the only other thing is to actually try flying into them. But they're so close! Pass me the binoculars. I'll try searching to see if anything's out there. We did get some lift from above the runway after all, but it was weak. It wasn't enough to raise the heavy double-seater glider. It must be because the ground hasn't warmed up enough to create strong thermals. Damn it! Aren't there any out here? In the meantime, the glider is gradually descending. Whoa! Then the wind came. Perhaps because of the influence of the morning glory, the airflow be is being disturbed. The glider wobbles and is hit by strong winds, simply reducing lift and causing a drop in altitude. I start to feel impatient. Should we have stayed over there after all? But if we'd done that... The cloud from before was moving even further away in the direction we'd want to head in. Even if we can rise to the altitude we need, it would be too late. We mo how much time has passed since we took off? Meanwhile, the sky is becoming brighter and is changing from the morning, or the morning glow to light blue. It looks like we can't reach it, Amani mumbled to herself. While looking up at the passage of the clouds stretching across the sky. No, that's not true. It's right in front of us. I guess so. I'll... We'll do something about it. Katori and Gehar were also looking for clouds from the ground. We haven't reached the time limit yet. They're losing a lot of altitude. They can't find any thermals. Oh, what will they do? At this rate, they won't reach the pretty clouds. Come on, you can do it! It doesn't matter how hard you try. You can't ma just make thermals appear. That bird of prey, the, a kite, is flying over there. It would be good if the glider could flap its wings like a bird. That's why I said they should have had an engine. Huh? What is it, Yoru? It looks like it's coming this way. Huh? You're right. It's coming towards us. C come on! Do your best! That's strange. There are no clouds like that in the sky over here either. Do your best! You were right, Katori. Yeah! No doubt about it! Even with the binoculars, it still looks tiny, though. In response to Katori's transmission, we headed over to the lake towards Windmill Hill. There should be some thermals over there. But there aren't any clouds that seem to indicate thermals. Just because there are, th are thermals, it doesn't always mean that clouds are formed. I think that could be because the hill is on a slope. You mean the thermals occur more easily above slopes? Yeah. The sunlight hits the ground diagonally, right? If the surface is also diagonal, the sun hits directly. This concentrates the energy, warming it up more easily. That's true. The sloping surface of the hill that we are heading towards is shining from being hit directly by the light of the morning sun. How is it, Katori? It, it's there! I found it! It's a lot higher than the one just now! There's no mistaking it! I can see a kite! We can't confirm that from where we are right now, but it seems a kite is flying over the hill. Kites are birds that glide out to out high altitudes using upward drafts. Aha! In other words, there you are, there is a thermal over there. However, it, that doesn't necessarily mean there's enough to lift a heavy uh, double-seated glider. But there's nothing else we can do but try. I didn't think of anything other than aiming for that point. Eventually, the glider crossed the lake and approached the air above Wimmo Hill. It's okay, Amane. Suddenly, we were shaken vertically. The barometer told us that the glider had dropped sharply. 
We've been caught in a downward draft? Ah, oh, we're going backwards! I panicked in the next moment. We felt a huge impact. Ah, oh, back up. Good, good. We're rising! Suddenly, we felt like we were being pushed from below. The glider steadily floated upwards. Then, a little later, the barometer informs us that we were rising. We had ridden the thermal. It's pretty strong. We can do this, Amane. Yeah! Is this a new song? Uh, they're climbing! They're climbing! Look, Ageha! Ah, uh, so they are. That's great. We've gotten up so high already. See? There was one after all. Yeah, way to go, Katori. It's nice getting praise. Does it look like they can climb all the way up? They've got pretty strong lift. I think they can make it. Take care of Amane. Leave it to me. Alright, go on! To the other side of the clouds! Yeah. On the wings that you guys made. Amazing, they've gone up so high. How can they fly so high just by riding on the wind? If you want to know the theory, I can tell you. Do you want to hear it? No, it's okay. Even if you tell me, I won't understand it. Also, I don't think that something like that can be explained in with theory. <laughs> Without theory, something that big would never be able to fly. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Before we knew it, the powerful thermals occurring for above Wimbledon Hill had lifted us high up in the sky. We were getting closer and closer to the morning glory. We're almost there, Romarni. Yeah. The clouds uh, that from below look small and intermittent were actually pretty big when we got close to them. I wonder how wide they are. At the very least, they would comfortably be able to cover the width of this glider. They stretched out and around the distance needed to go diagonally across the lake. It's a little far, isn't it? It's okay. If we can keep going above the clouds, it should be easy to pass through across them. The thermal that we were riding was pretty powerful. As Amani had just explained, the slope of the hill is hit directly by the sunlight, so it heats up quickly. In other words, that meant that the difference between temperature and is bigger compared to the surrounding area. If there's no difference in temperature, then thermals will not be created, and if the difference is big, then strong thermals will be made. The upward draft that Katori had found for us feels strong enough to take us all the way to the horizon. While I w this was happening, the sun is rising, the air temperature is increasing. Morning glory occurs for about two hours from the beginning of dawn. Come on, come on! I'm getting nervous! I'm, ge I'm getting impatient! Uh, however, if the we try too hard, we'll lose balance and we might lose altitude. While checking the rate of ascent on the barometer, I turned the glider to aim the core of the thermal. The most effective part. Eventually, the glider that Amane and I were riding reached the altitude of morning glory that we were aiming for. Then, we had soon risen above the cloud and reached the position that we could view it from above. Look, Amane! Yeah, I can see it. I knew she'd be looking at it, but I said it anyway. It's because I was so moved. Is there anyone who wouldn't be moved to see a spectacle like this? With the bluish-purple sky in the background, the passage of clouds shone as they were bathed in the pale pink light. Words like beautiful wouldn't really express it at all. The word that came to mind was divine. My trembling hand gripped the yoke to gain an altitude to allow us to stay above the clouds, I turned into the thermal. I glanced at the front seat and saw Amani from the side. Her eyes were open like a little kid as she looked at the passages of clouds stretched across the sky. I'm running out of time! This is the view that Asuka wanted to show me. To bring me to this place. Amani, can you get the camera? Oh, yeah, that's right! Before we took off, Agea had given her a digital camera. Thank God! She asked us to take a picture if we were able to fly above the morning glory. This was the perfect viewpoint, looking across the clouds. 
I've taken it. Alright, let's go to that place. <sighs> yeah. Amani nodded as if preparing herself. We didn't come here to look at the clouds. Guys, I'm really sorry. But if we keep going, I- I don't- I'm not gonna have time to edit this and put it out. I'm so sorry! Tomorrow! Tomorrow! We'll see Morning Glory, I promise! Oh my god! I'm so excited! So stoked! Okay, so, until tomorrow! Peace out, y'all!